I noticed with the Phil DeFranco show that like 2016, after that election, your show went to a place which, which I love. And I think that the audience did too. And I think your views reflected that, but it went to a place where it was like, um, forgive these numbers, but for example, it was like, if your show was like 80% sort of a little bit YouTube gossip kind of back in the day, and maybe 20% where you would touch on serious news, I felt like that sort of flipped right around the election in 2016, where your show became much more about the news, your perspective on the news. And like, if there's something within this YouTube social media sphere that was worthy enough to, to discuss, you would. And I appreciated that. But you also are not afraid to tackle bigger issues. And I think we've seen that really culminate this year with like you talking with um, Andrew Yang, you talking with Dr. Fauci, you having taking on these really serious conversations. And I, I love that, but I don't know that I've ever asked you like how, just how deliberate that, that pivot was. So I think in 2016, there was a one specific video that made me realize, oh, there might actually be an audience for this. Cause if I touched politics or anything like that in the past, the video would, would die. Um, it Ooh. was a fact check video of, uh, a debate with Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, both candidates at the time. Uh, that I think hit a million views and I was like, oh, people do care. Mm. Um, and there, there was already a distrust, nothing uh, in media, not, not like it is today. Um, but I think that was one of the first times I realized it. I mean, honestly, for, from a, from an anxiety standpoint, I'd almost rather cover 70% like lighter news and then heavy stuff. It's just that everything in yeah. the news right now is important and is heavy and it's just different variations of fires. So it was like, uh, and you know, I'm shooting this one back to back with, you know, the, the Dr. Mike, uh, podcast that we did, but, uh, it was like yesterday, instead of just talking about, um, you know, news around COVID-19, which there was some, cause every, almost it, it's, it touched almost every aspect of life. It was like the other <laughs> stories that I talked about was a woman punching her dog and a guy getting shot, uh, while, while he was unarmed. Um, and so it's just like different heavy topics. Um, and there are times which I, where I wish I had a, a lighter, a lighter show, but I think that inherently I, I also almost every interaction I have with people, even though I get more views if I'm talking about the YouTube stuff or shit like that, almost every time I meet someone in, in public, it's like them thanking me for covering a serious topic and making it understandable, yeah. uh, both for them and family. And so I think, and that, that that's also part of the, when I talk about like the feeling of responsibility and guilt, if I didn't bring a show that was up to expectation or, you know, I feel like I need to take a small break. I think that's where it deri it's derived from. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess you could say it was part of the plan, but everything with me is kind of this raw organic switch. Like some, like even with what I cover on the yeah. show, you know, there's trends and ups and downs and, but that's kind of, if you really pay attention to the news, that's almost all stuff. It's like whenever you see one shooting, all of a sudden there's like seven other shooting reports yeah. that happen. So there, everything has kind of a trend. 